Finally, the content I was born to make. I am Mecca and This is the type of video I absolutely love getting in a good rant about. I hope I'm not going to get too loud today. This one does kind of grind my gears as we are dealing with this bigger picture at hand than just the basic stories and the basic content of the quality of the productions because believe me, Disney on the movie studio side, the entertainment industry as a whole, scripted, fictionalized, CGI heavy, that sort of thing. That is, I think, the least of the worries of a lot of people on this. I mean, it's a great escape, isn't it? It's a great place to go and escape into that thing. And you know what? We have those things. We have those things. A lot of people do have their nostalgia over the Disney parks. A lot of people do have that. I get it. I get it. When these properties and these companies have so, so, so much power and money and have so much pull to where they can throw Quentin Tarantino out of a movie theater because they have a movie premiering and they're like, no, 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 we, we take priority, we take... That is when I, I notice things about these, these companies, right? We do have a greater economic foe than, than I think a lot of the YouTubers in the commentary community that I have seen and maybe been on panels with in the past want to really tell you, I am Mecca, if you want to hear how Disney is getting sued by their workers, I'm your channel. The following video is brought to you through the generous support of viewers like you. If you like this content, then please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. And for those who are in the position to donate, this channel thanks you. And so does this orange cat. And another thing, we should not be having to beg money from other people who are working on tips in a service-based, tip-based economy. Why are these CEOs not opening their wallets? Why aren't the executives and the millionaires and the billionaires and the 500,000 heirs, the people who make a lot of money, because, because they know that it's going to keep us in crumbs. It's going to keep the servers tipping each other. It's going to keep the bud tenders tipping, tipping each other. And it's going to keep the Disney workers having to eat out of the garbage. They were called out. Oh, oh we're, we're going back. We're going back in time first before we get to the new thing about what they're getting sued for. The heiress, Abigail Disney, who is not, I guess, not very uh, well liked in the billionaire sphere, I suppose. She made an undercover to Disneyland and discovered that staff have to forage for food in the garbage because they're so poor as she attacks the company's $66 million CEO. And that's, this was in 2019. This is in 2019. So this was before 2020 when Bob Iger stepped down conveniently about two weeks before the whole world shut down. Remember that one? Moved in Bob Chapek from Disney Parks. Hi, Bob. Bob. Right? So remember how that happened. They're getting sued or investigated. They're getting, well, they're getting sued by the workers, first off. They're getting investigated by the SEC for over six billion with a B. A few moments later. Drop the taco, get in the car. I don't know what the crap is up with Disney. Their parks, their theme, their theme parks and their movie studios have been have been reported by some people on YouTube, right? They've been they've been going through the finances. They say, they were saying this, what, about a year and a half ago, that Disney was going to sell off Lucasfilm and things like that because they were seeing on their back-end office, you know, finance paperwork, how they were just juggling and finding which studios that they could kind of sub-incorporate into sub-categories and sub-businesses for what? Tax purposes, so they could say, well, this one's losing money here, these aren't, so let's write off everything that this thing does, and st so that's going to be a bigger write-off on their bottom line, leaving what? The federal government, basically, as producers of these films, these horrible films. That's what happens. They write off their losses, they scrap these things, and what happens? We're paying for it out of our tax dollars. We're paying for everything out of our tax dollars. Every every 
place on the planet. We're paying for these bad movies. We're paying for everything except, I don't know, paying for people to, to work at these places. That's actually not true, though. That's actually not true, though. What happens? You have to get on assistance when you work these jobs. You go to a Disney job, you don't make enough money to live. What do you have to do? You get on food stamps. They don't call them food stamps anymore. What else? You get on supplemental income. You take some money for unemployment when you don't get hours at some of these places. Because depending on what state you're in and what laws there are, you might get your hours cut down to nothing and you might qualify for benefits. Then you're working for the federal government. What does that sound like, people? I don't know. There's a word for that. You can tell me in the comment section below. It might start with calm. I don't know. Fills me with blinding rage. So the Disney workers, they're getting paid less than fast food workers. Yeah, that's a real problem in the economy. The, the executive class and the corporate class and the business class all keep the little people <laughs> picking out of the trash, picking out the trash, tipping each other with the little scraps we have left, and then we're fighting over the scraps. That's what I'm seeing in Las Vegas right here. I went to a job fair not too long ago, actually two days ago. Call center jobs that people can't do First off, right, that can't stick around for very long. Jobs that people can't, they can't, they can't make ends meet on. People can't make ends meet on jobs. We're in this gig-based economy where you have your job and then you have your three other jobs to pay for the bills to get to the main job that you can't afford to get to in the first place. That is a problem with the entire economy. Worrying about... Kids with too much health insurance is the least of my problems. If you've seen my Twitter feed, you'll know what stuff really annoys me over there. I'm more worried about adults, grown adults, being able to pay bills, make ends meet, having a roof over their heads, especially me, right? So I'm more worried and concerned about that because remember, I'm not, I'm not getting all this funny money from YouTube, which isn't really from the viewers, as we all know. I have a theory that a lot of that money comes from where? Lobbyists. The, lo the same lobbyists who want to control the narratives to keep everybody at each other's throat. Why? Political advertising dollars. Here's where I go full tinfoil. The aluminum archives are real. Holy crap. As you can see, so more than 100 Disney hotel maintenance workers responsible for keeping the company's Lux Hotels up and running in Southern California. So these aren't even just the park workers who are eating out of the garbage. Like, like the, the main, you know, like the food vendors, those people, the people you see that you have to deal with if you are, if you can afford to go to Disney. That's the other thing. They want to keep these, and they're doing the same thing in Las Vegas, right? They're making everything nickel and dime you to death. Everything is paid parking. I was at the job fair. They're charging you $7 for iced tea, right? They finally bring out a case of water for the people who are there. It's like, are you, are you kidding me? This is a job fair, not a tourist trap airport. <laughs> this is the type of stuff I do like talking about because I don't know what the solution is other than the aliens landing and overthrowing everything and saying, you know what? You humans can't anymore. So we got y'all sorted out and categorized by name and birthday anyway. And, and you're assigned your role based on what you're called. <laughs> That might be going a little too much tinfoil at this point, but then again, they did subcategorize us by how they were experimenting on us with our DNA, so when they did create us, hey, story of creationism's true, we're going full woo. We're going full woo. A ton of us have second jobs to survive. Lead plaintiff told Fox Business, I was working 48 hours a week in the mornings at Disney and delivering pizzas five nights a week for Pizza Hut amid regional housing crisis. That's the other thing. People can't afford to get in houses. You need two or three incomes in your household just to qualify to get a place to live. That's what a lot of these people don't tell you. They're saying, yeah, get out of the big cities, get out of the big cities. Yes, yes. However, in the rural places where you also can't survive anymore, you're not going to have as many opportunities as in the big city. So you're, you're damned if you're doing, you're damned if you're don't in this economy and environment. And I'm, I'm not sure what the solution is either. Do you guys have any solutions? 
franchise owners of because because it's really easy to be like a political pundit, isn't it? Really easy to come in and say, and these people are the ones to blame because they did it. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of people in the comments, and I know I yell at people in the comments for this sometimes. When I see one side being blamed for something, I think back to, you know, I'm a lot older than I look. I did dye the gray hair for a reason. But I am older than I look. They don't remember how it used to be. They don't remember that this is the same crap day in, day out. Gen Xers. What happened? We didn't think we would have a few. We had no idea what our prospects would be because we figured, well, we're never going to be able to support ourselves, work our way up, have something. We're just going to have to wait until our parents die. And guess what? If our parents die and they don't leave you a house, then what? Then you're screwed. Then you're screwed. What if they only leave you something you can't live or leave you something you can't live in that you only sell for a tiny little bit of change that lasts maybe about a year of, you know, maybe retail money? And then you're two years later and you're still in this giant recessive economy that's been going down and down and down since what, the 80s? Since probably the 80s when everything was in excess. Everybody wanted to buy and, th and, and we still see too much of that too. I buy too much crap randomly because that's all you have at the end of the week, isn't it? You have $20 at the end of the week so you're like, you know what? I'm going to go and, and splurge on that vape card or I'm going to go and buy that dinner out or I'm going to go and do this or that. Because sometimes, or I'm going to buy a stupid action figure because that makes me feel better because I didn't have that as a kid because what happened in the 80s? We didn't have every single thing either as Gen Xers. We didn't have, in the 90s, you didn't have every single action figure. You got one or two of them. You got one or two of them. So you go buy the stuff you didn't have. You go through that phase in life. I should be reading the article. I'm just, I'm just ranting about life things here. I hope you enjoy this because I'm very passionate about just ranting about these things because somewhere along the line, my brain will have an aha moment of yes, and this is how we fix it. And then something will happen where time will skip and then, and then the whole universe will be in the spaghetti, uni spaghetti monster universe with the Berenstein bears instead of the Baron. It was the Berenstein, right? That was the right one. Berenstein was the wrong one. We'll be in the wrong universes again. Franchise owners of larger chains have to pay at least $20 an hour for anyone to work there. Yeah, they're making $20 an hour just to work fast food. <laughs> so they're making less than people working at McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's. But then again, you work at McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's, what do you get? One day a week, two days a week. You're going to close one night and then you're going to open the next morning. And then they're going to have nobody scheduled and you're going to be there and they're going to do what? They're going to do what? Tell me in the comments. They're going to say, can you stay? Can you stay? And if you don't, then they never offer you hours ever again as long as you live there. Work there. Live there. You, know, you might as well be living there. You might as well be living there. Oh, Freudian slip, but that's for the best. Because huh? then you live at those jobs. So they, they want you to stay. Okay, can you stay another whatever, two hours today? By the time you take that from tax and you go and actually buy a meal somewhere, well, if you're lucky enough to work fast food, they'll give you a meal while you work there. But then you're eating fast food, so that's even worse. So you, I do this with retail. You know, they, they want you there 20 hours for the week and you have a contract. And then that's how you get more hours, though. But then they start saying, oh, well, it's only 80 hours a month now, so we're just going to give you it all in one week, in the first three days, and we're going to have you do every job that you weren't hired for. And that's why I started getting really annoyed at that job and stopped showing up. So if anybody wants that work history, somebody who's going to show up and know exactly what needs to be done, work my butt off. Yeah, but you know, you, these companies are going to have to start paying people enough to live because what happens? They're going to be working two and three jobs and they're going to start what? Being resentful. They're going to start acting out. They're going to start caring in society. It's time for the Karen of the Week. We're going to have more and more people who can't take it anymore. Prior to getting, prior to getting a better paying maintenance job, Torres said he worked for Disney's food and beverage division, division where the labor union maintained its own food bank for members. <laughs> we have a food bank in Disney's food and beverage. You have a food bank for your employees at Disney. This is another thing I hear. Oh, how do we save Disney? How do we save Disney? Disney can go under. Disney really needs to go under at this point, I think, don't they? If they have every company who cannot pay its employees enough mo money to live without needing public assistance, food stamps, food banks, 
unemployment insurance. Every company who cannot maintain every single employee at an hourly rate that can sustain one person at a, an apartment and groceries, right? Those companies need to go under. Every one of those companies. How do we get rid of those companies? I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. Do, do people need a side? Don't do that. Don't do that. We vote them out of existence. Can you vote these companies out? I don't know why we're so worried about protecting Disney. Why are we so worried about saving them? It's going to be another one of those cases where, yeah, it's going to backfire and it's going to have an equal and opposite reaction, just like Bud Light, you know? So you want to be morally righteous and, and boycott the thing that you don't, that you don't believe in. But what happens? All those people lose jobs. So all those people now don't have anything. At least they had something. An issue, a key issue lawsuit, Disney alleged, required the workers to provide their own tools, which under California law means they should be paid double the state's hourly minimum wage of fifteen fifty. Why does Disney not have a warehouse for tools for people to use? Because they would probably grab them and pawn them so they have enough money to, I don't know, buy their groceries that way. Why don't they? Because Disney has been going under for a very long time. These companies have been barely staying afloat. They've been using loopholes and taxes, tax write-offs. They've been basically funded by the federal government for at least since 2008, most of these companies. Look what happened. The airline, they started bailing out airlines. The airline companies are losing money because of their own incompetence and their own inefficiency. This is so much more of a political thing because I can't, I can't support one party over the other when they do all this crap. When they do all this crap, they argue so much about the thing that they think needs solving, like like a border, but this also needs solving, and this also needs solving, and this also needs solving, all at once, and we can't do it, can we? We can't do it. The class action complaint filed Friday that nobody's talking about, right? Disney doesn't want this, so this comes on Friday. What's gonna happen? Tonight's the Oscars. Nobody's gonna see this. No, or none of the investors are, except for the investors who watch what? YouTube. They watch YouTube now because they're tired of losing money too. And you know what, the investors? If you're tired of losing money, maybe, maybe you should figure out something, you know, that's not going to just skim off the top because your grandkids are going to be jobless and homeless because they can't make ends meet as baristas while you're sitting there in your billions and millions writing them out of the fucking will because you don't like their political beliefs all right that's what i see happening that's what i see happening i see both sides doing as much as they can to hurt each other as they possibly can ah the lawsuit is seeking unpaid wages see when i worked at taco bell we had to go in and correct the two minutes because they wouldn't pay me the two minutes early clock in and then they don't want you to stand there for two minutes so what are you gonna do you gotta sit in the car until the very second you, you gotta clock in because they don't want you clocking in one minute over or one minute under see that's how you get an extra what hour out of the week by those those 10 minutes in the morning 10 minutes in the evening but then they don't like that of those jobs too because that's how you would get a little bit extra money just a little bit of extra because sometimes that's all you need is just that little bit of extra and that's what they know and that's why they don't give it to you i got an 11 cent raise one year at macy's okay why do you think i am so desperate to try and stay in youtube because if i wanted to work fast food and sell coffee, I wouldn't be on YouTube. Now watch this coffee commercial before I lose my voice. Need a break from hopping around time and space? Then why not enjoy a delicious cup of Dalek House coffee? Perfect to start your day, even if you're not sure where or when you are. Now in light roast, dark roast, and non-binary blend. Does every sci-fi property now involve drinking coffee? Who's writing this stuff, Juan Valdez? Enjoy a delicious cup of Dalek House coffee. Now available at Smith's, Costco, and other fine stores. And that's my rant on Disney. Yeah, why, why should they? Why should? Why should we save them? Why? Why are we saving Disney at this point? I really, really don't get it. But and then, if they go under, then a lot of people will be even worse shape than they are now, which is a problem anyway. I am Mecca. Uh, tell, tell me what you guys think. This is an open for discussion debate one. I will try my best to not argue on that. Because I'm, I'm curious, because I know we get a lot of these, a lot of just buzzwords and blame, and it's really easy to blame California, it's really easy to blame the Democrats, or it's really easy to blame the Republicans, and it's really easy. But I think as a society, maybe it's us, maybe it's Gen X, maybe we screwed up, and we just kind of did our thing and kept our heads down, and now all these big giant corporations are taking advantage of us. Maybe it's time Gen X fought back. 
<laughs> Tell me what you think. I uh, will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully. I don't even know where my boom is.